Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with Docusaurus version 2, how you can install it on your local computer, change the content of the documentation website, and then upload it on GitHub Pages or on Netlify, so the full stack, so we're going to start from the beginning all the way to the end, so you can have your Docusaurus website online, and ready for other people to be searched okay so first thing what is uh, just a couple of words about what is docusaurus so what we're actually got docusaurus is generally used for a documentation website and what you're going to get straight out from the box without almost very little work is a website that is going to look like this which you're going to have like a landing page so Docusaurus itself was built with Docusaurus. So we're going to have a landing page as this one here where we have icons uh, and we have uh, a navigation bar here at the top and we have a footer. Is also very nice because it's mobile friendly. So if you look at it in the mobile version here, as you can see, it renders very well. But let's go back to the Windows, like to the computer version. So let me close this one here. You have uh, the landing page, as I previously mentioned, the documentation page, uh, all straight out from the box. You will not have to do anything. Uh, where you have this navigation bar here on the left, uh, you have this navigation here on the right, uh, in which you can navigate between headings. Uh, so as you can see, you have introduction, disclaimer, and then you have uh, a better Docusaurus is coming to town. So you can easily navigate uh, through the page. Uh, with this navigation here, while with this uh, left uh, uh, navigation bar, you can navigate to different pages. And uh, you have a blog section, which you can uh, use and write your blog. Uh, if you want to, you can use Docusaurus just for blog, or you can use Docusaurus just for documentation. You can remove the landing page if you want to, if you don't want to have it and go straight uh, directly to the documentation page. So we'll try to see all of that in this video, and I will try to show you how you can create it. Another question that you might ask is why would you like to use uh, Docosaurus? Well, Docosaurus is very nice because uh, you, will, you can build the documentation very fast. Uh, and yes, true, if you want to document your, um, your project, you could use uh, like GitHub pages, uh, no, GitHub, uh, the wiki, so the wiki section, so each GitHub uh, repository, as uh, his own wiki, and you could do that if you want to. You could use the wiki of the of GitHub. So let me just show you very quickly. The only problem with that uh, is don't you don't have a lot of flexibilities. Uh, it's not easier to just to um, like uh, to add the new pages, to add a navigation bar. So for instance, here if you want to, you have in GitHub this wiki, and you can create. Uh, like different pages, and then you could have a small navigation bar on the right, but it's not as user-friendly as uh, honestly is Docosaurus, because you're going to get a full website, a full documentation website or a blog. Another advantage is that it's built with React, so if you are familiar with React, you can add the pages using React. We are not going to do that, we're not going to focus on that, we're going to use actually the power of Markdown. So as you can see here, uh, like you can add pages with Markdown, and that's the real advantage because even if you don't know how to code with HTML, sure, you could make a website with the HTML5, for instance, and you could make a documentation website. The only problem with that is that you need to write a lot of HTML, and maybe you're not familiar with that. So, with Docosaurus, you can actually write Markdown documents, which are super simple to write and I will show you how to do that. And then you can add all these pages to your documentation website. So it's going to be more or less like writing like a simple text file or a Word file, but um, Docusaurus just get extract the information that you have put in the Markdown file and it renders it on the website. So it's extremely, extremely powerful. And also is CEO friendly. So what does it mean CEO friendly? So it, search, uh, it can be easily searched by Google. Um, by Google, It renders very fast because uh, the, um, it's a static website. 
So is going to be client side routing and pre rendering. So as you can see, we can change pages uh, like there is no lag because all the pages are pre rendered. So it's super fast the website. And as you can see, there is no lag between opening a page and the other because it's client side and is pre rendered. Okay. So I think I've already covered the basic and which are the advantages. If you want to learn more or if you want to read more about the advantages of using Docosaurus, you can go on their official documentation in the docs section here. So Docosaurus and then docs. And then eventually you can read about why um, it could be good to use Docosaurus for uh, documenting your project. Of course, if you have a full, want to have a full website, uh, probably you could use uh, different uh, things like uh, React.js app or a Gatsby app. But if you want to just have a simple, docu do simply document your project, uh, I would highly suggest you to just uh, check out Docosaurus. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to install it on our machine. And we can see here in getting started, we have installation and uh, we can actually start uh, with uh, this uh, um, code. And we can just code, type this code here in the terminal. Keep in mind that you will need two requirements. Okay, you will need to have install node on your computer. And if you don't have node installed on your computer, you can actually click here in the link or you can search for node.js and then you can download it. I'm using Windows and then eventually I just click in Windows, you get the Windows installer. Just check that uh, is like the right version. So I have a 64 bit computer, so I'm getting the 64 version. And uh, in addition, we need to have uh, Yarn install. Again, if you don't have Yarn install, just click here or look for Yarn. And then uh, you can say install Yarn and then you can install Yarn on your computer. You can select the operative system. You can select the version, download the installer and install it on your computer. OK. I have both already installed on my computer, so I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to keep the project inside here, GitHub project, and I'm going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it DocuSaurus um, example, example, uh, YouTube. Okay, so we have created our repository. When we are inside our repository, we can either open the terminal and navigate to this repository, or we can click here at the top, type CMD, and then enter. And as you can see, the terminal is actually open here inside this repository. So we can type node-v, so it means that I have node installed. If you get an error message, it means that you don't have node installed. And then the same goes with yarn. So I have already yarn and node installed. So if I type yarn dash V, I have also yarn installed. Okay. So I will not have to install neither yarn nor node. And we can actually um, get the scaffolding of the project here by copying this line here inside our repository. So we just copy this line here and we're going to initialize the website. I would suggest you to initialize the website with the name my website. Okay. So it's going to create a subdirectory inside our project folder, and we're going to use the classic template. I will not change that for the beginning. If you are a beginner, just keep it simple and just keep it the, the classic. So just copy that um, string from their website. Type enter. It's going to take a little bit of time, and it's going to download all the files inside our repository. Another important thing that I would like to mention is that you can have you, is, you have two options as you can see it's creating my website inside here so you have two options either you can keep the documentation website in a completely different repository from uh, your uh, project or you can keep it inside so let's say here that i had another file which was a python file or an r file or a javascript file here which was my main code and this main directory here is not Docosaurus example, but was like a, a project, like uh, how to um, uh, calculate the weather forecast. I could have had all my code here inside, and I could have had my website inside my project folder. That is nice because you can keep your uh, source, 
and uh, your documentation all together inside the same folder, which in this case is Docosaurus example YouTube. Okay, so it's up to you. You can have two different folders uh, and then upload those uh, into GitHub repository. So you will have your Docosaurus website separate uh, from uh, your uh, project repository. And this could be actually handy if your project uh, is not, uh, is not uh, public. Because uh, GitHub, if you don't have a pro account, uh, you can have uh, a GitHub repository only if your project uh, is set to public. So if you want to keep your file private uh, and you want to use GitHub pages, maybe it's better to have two separate repository, one which will contain the Docosaurus uh, website, one which will contain uh, your, uh, um, the, the source code of your project. However, if you use a public repository, maybe you can combine the two. So inside the same uh, repository, you, you both have the Docosaurus website as well as your source code. Okay? Alternatively, you could use Netlify and Netlify or Netlify, I don't know how it's pronounced, this website here to host. And we might see later on uh, how to... So you can use Netlify. And in this case, you can actually, um, even if your repository is private, uh, you can have free hosting thanks to Netlify. Okay, so that's also an alternative, an alternative to GitHub pages. So let's go back to our um, uh, terminal. As you can see, all the files have been downloaded. Everything was fine. Success. The only thing that we need to do is inside our repository, as I previously mentioned, Docosaurus created my website for me. So this is my website. So what we need to do now is we need to CD into this repository. So let's go back to the command window here. So we're going to CD into my website. And then once we are inside my website, we're going to type yarn start. And that's why you need yarn. So we're going to type yarn start and it's going to run a development service a server on our local computer and as you can see here we have localhost 3000 and we are going to have our docosaurus website appearing in a second as i previously mentioned you get the similar very similar to the docosaurus website and this is all straight out of the box we didn't have to write anything we didn't have to do anything you can change between dark and light mode you have the document section which as you we will see later how to change this markdown file we also have the blog section and we have my site okay so let's go step by step how we can actually the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to connect this full website because it's already a full website as you can see here you can go from one part of the website so you have all the links which are already working as you can see it's super fast we're going to connect this with github okay so the first thing that we are going to do is to create a GitHub repository and we are going to call it, so we're going to open our GitHub. Okay, so we're going to create a, a new repository. You can give it any name that you want to. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to call it Docosaurus example YouTube, just to be consistent, doesn't really matter. Docosaurus example youtube we are not going to add any description at the moment we are going to keep it public because it doesn't really matter we are not going to initialize this repository with the readme we are not going to add a git ignore just because as you can see inside my website here we have already a git ignore file so docosaurus already did that for um, for us we don't need to do we don't need to do that and uh, we're not going to add a license at the moment so we are going to create a repository so now the repository is created we are going to do push an existing repository from the command line because we have already the our repository so let's go back here in this case we are not going to push my website but you're going to push this docosaurus example as I previously mentioned, if you wanted to uh, have two separate uh, repository, one for your website, one for your project, well, you could just push this uh, my website to GitHub. 
In this case, I'm going to push this Doc Docusaurus example YouTube all to GitHub because later on I'm going to add my, my code inside here. And then I have the website which explain what the code does. Okay, so we're going to go back here. We're going to open another terminal because that one is running our website. So the first thing that we need to do is do, do git init. So another thing that you will need to have installed is uh, um, you need to have git install. So in this case, I have already installed it. But uh, as you can see, you can see if you have git install by git dash dash version. If you don't have git install on your computer, you will have to install it. So git install and you can install it from here. So again, if you have a Mac or if you have a Windows, just follow the instruction and you can download it on your computer. So we can go back here to the terminal where we were. So we're going to do git init. So we're going to initialize this repository with git. Uh, so this, the next step that we're going to do is git add. So we're going to add all the files that are inside the repository. Don't worry because uh, we have already a git ignore file in the docusaurus. Then we're going to do git commit. Okay. And the message is going to be first commit. Okay. So we have committed the file and then the what we need to do is we need to push this file to the remote repository. Okay, so how do we do that? We just copy this string here. Keep in mind that don't copy this string specifically here because yours is going to be different. It's going to have your uh, GitHub username and it's going to have uh, the name of your repository here. So just don't copy exactly this one, but just copy here on the side on GitHub the message that it prompts and then right click and then we are going to push to uh, to master. Okay, so now it's pushing the file to master, and in a second, once it's done, now we should have uh, all the files inside here. So as you can see, this repository doesn't have a readme. We could add a readme if we want to, and inside here there are the same files that we had locally on our computer. So we have my website, we have blog, docs, source, static and all the files okay so the last step that i would like to show you before start editing the website i want to show you how you can have this website uh, online and deploy it uh, with uh, uh, github uh, um, with github pages so what do we need to do is we need to go back into the documentation of docusaurus okay and then uh, we um, just have to look for uh, advanced guides. So let me just have a look. So Docusaurus uh, 2 GitHub pages. Okay. So we look at the deployment here. So it's going to explain everything that we need to do. We need to, to so if we want to have it, uh, uh, put it on Netlify, we just have to do yarn build is going to build our project in a build folder and then we can actually deploy deploy just copy that file to netlify actually let's do that first with netlify so you will need of course an account with netlify so you will need to sign up i already have account i, I already have an account so i can just sign in into my account so login here okay i'm going to create a new site here for you will not have anything probably here once you sign in so new site from git okay actually sorry uh, just uh, let's create a new um, site so we just have to so sites Okay, actually you just have to drag and drop your site folder inside here. So it's even, it's even easier. So let's do that in a second. So we go back to the terminal here. So the terminal that we use to push to GitHub. So as you can see, we are inside desktop, GitHub project, Docusaurus example. So we need to CD into my website. Okay, now I CD into my website and we do yarn build, okay. 
So Docusaurus is going to build our website inside the build folder. So as you can see here, yarn run build or yarn build is the same. So you just uh, create, uh, once it finishes, the static file will be generated in the build directory. Okay, so it's just going to take a second. Now that, as you can see here, we have the build folder. We didn't have this folder before. As you can see, uh, it's just a new folder. So we, we drag and drop this file inside here. So the site has not yet been deployed. It's going to take a second. Now the site is deployed. So if I click here, here we have. So we have our website deployed in almost no time. In few minutes, we have our website deployed on uh, Netlify or Netlify. I don't know how to pronounce it. So if you want to, and I will not spend too much time, you can even change this name. So you can uh, edit site name. So you can call this one from Cranky Johnson. You can call it uh, example, uh, Docusaurus example, Do Docusaurus example, YouTube. Of course, maybe you will want to find a better name, but if this name is available, well, now we have our website. So if we go to Docusaurus example, YouTube, this is our website. So in no time, our website has been de deployed online and we have our website up and running. As you can see, you can navigate through the website very quickly. And uh, if you want to, of course, uh, you can even add a custom domain, which I believe you can purchase uh, from Netly Netlify or uh, you can purchase it with a um, custom with a domain provider online. Okay, that's out of the scope of this video. I just want to show you how you can get your website uh, online. Okay, now that we have our website online, and uh, so this is our repository, let's have a quick look, uh, because I think it's important, uh, how to uh, actually change uh, the content of that website. Okay, so in this case, uh, I'm going to use uh, a web store, which is uh, an ID. You can use any um any id you want so vs code uh, webstorm by charm doesn't really matter it's up to you whatever you whatever you prefer is um, is fine so we're going to navigate through all the file and i'm going to show you all the files that are important that we need to consider and we're going to edit them in order to uh, configure our page okay so Let's have a look quickly at the file that you are going to modify. So as, a previ so as we previously did, so our localhost is still running. So we have here on our uh, localhost. So actually, let me just, sorry, I don't want to confuse you, but we have our website running here in this uh, command window. So we are going to close this. Okay. So this, we are going to close it. Actually, this one was running, so we're going to press Ctrl C. We're going to terminate the job. So if you reload the page, now it's going to give us an error because it's no longer running on our computer. As you can see here, cannot be reached. So let me actually just close a couple of uh, tabs here. Let me close this one. And the reason why I closed that one is because right now we're going to use uh, um, WebStorm. So there is a terminal inside. So if you don't use uh, an ID which has a terminal inside, of course, uh, no problem. You can use uh, the um, terminal of Windows, uh, but I just prefer to use uh, the terminal inside here because all inside the ID. So we cd into my website, as you can see here, uh, same thing as we did before. And then we're going to do yarn and then we do uh, start, okay? So we're going to start uh, the uh, deploy uh, the, the server here on our local machine on localhost 3000 and uh, we just have it inside here and then we can open uh, different terminals okay so let's look at the project so the project that i can see inside here is the same as if you would navigate through your uh, directory so inside here my website so the main file that we are going to edit are located in different folders and i'm going to show you here so let's start from the beginning. So we have the blog. So we have three blogs currently written. And as you can see, there are blogs here. So there are Hola 
hello and welcome. It is auto -re reloading. So if we change uh, one of the of the file, and as you can see, this is written in uh, Markdown. So blog feature are powered. So as you can see here, blog feature are powered. So this is exactly what is rendering from this text file or this Markdown file is rendering here. So in, instead, if you say blog or I type website and then I save it, can you see the changes are uh, loaded in real time? So are reflected, all the changes that we make are reflected in real time on our website, which is running on localhost. Of course, uh, the one that is running online is not going to be changed unless we deploy a new, a new folder and we build the file and we deploy. But locally, we can make changes on the fly. So website is, and then we see all the changes reflected here, okay? So this is the, the first thing that I wanted to show you. So let's go back. So as you can see, blog features. Now, so we have the blog, which is very important, which we can change inside here. Uh, we have the docs. So the docs contain all the document file. Let me close this view of the markdown file. So if you go inside our website, we have docs, okay? And here we are. So we have four documents, style guide, document two, document three. So document one, document two, document three, and power, mar mar power by markdown is the last document here. So as you can see here, power by markdown. Again, if you want to change it, uh, I don't think yeah, we cannot change it from here. We need to change it from another location, which I will ju just show you in a second. But uh, you can change the text uh, as we did for the blog, uh, and you can type something. Can um, you? And then we save it, uh, and then can you? Is just appearing here. Okay. So we go back. Uh, we save it. Uh, so we have the documents. Uh, so we have seen the blog the document, another file, and another very nice thing, and a very nice feature is that if you go inside the header one, so this is the style guide here, as you can see here, as I showed you before, there is the markdown syntax, there is the header, so we can navigate through this thing. If you update this file and we add a new section, to add a new section, if you want to add an adding one section, so you just have one hash, two ashes is an adding two and so forth. So as you can see here, there is an example of the header, so different type of headers that you can get. But let's add the introduction. Uh, so this uh, website contains um, our documentation. We save it. So here, without pressing a re refresh or anything, we have this our introduction here, and this also navigation panel here on the right has been updated. So now we have introduction, okay? So it's honestly fantastic. It renders very fast and it's super easy to modify, okay? So final thing, we have uh, inside source. So you will probably navigate and use this file just at the beginning because you will want to change the main landing page. So we have inside source, we have custom CSS, in which we can change the colors. So right now, as you can see, you have this greenish color, which you can, of course, change. And an easy, super easy way to do it is you type Docosaurus, and then you type color. So you get styling and layout in Docosaurus, okay? So you can pick any color so you can scroll down you can pick any color that you like for instance uh, let me choose uh, like uh, an orange i don't know it's just it's just an example so we just have to copy this x color and you can find like whichever uh, like if you want to find x uh, colors you can find any any like a lot of website uh, they can give you this uh, this code with this ID, you just get it from here, but you can pick and choose whichever color you, you want practically. And uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I will just let you play with that. But 
as you can see here, you get the same thing. So you just have to copy the color that you like. So let's say that we like this orange here. So we're going to copy this, uh, this code here. So we go back here to styling and layout, primary color. We just paste this one. We just go here at the back, copy. And then we are going to replace all this one here. So we copy and paste. We look at our website again. Now it's going to be looking orange, okay? So again, super simple if you want to change that. So, and it's very nice. I mean, to some extent, you could find it a bit, little bit limited later on because is like you have this color, which is of course just going on in all your website. But I think it's very nice because it's pretty simple to just change the color. And we are not building a website, we're just building a documentation website. So those things matter a little bit less, okay? So inside here, custom CSS, you can add other custom CSS classes. I will not go into detail how to add and what is CSS, but basically you can apply styling to your text so or to your uh, classes or to some IDs here. I will just uh, suggest you to have a couple of videos or look at a couple of videos on CSS if you want to know, learn more what is CSS, but to be honest, you don't need it for this. Uh, uh, for this uh, docosaurus because again we are focusing on the content we are not focusing on building the website okay then we have this index website which uh, i mean just changing to react.js so it's not uh, uh, to um, this um, website is not built with uh, html but is uh, built with react okay so as we mentioned before so i really like react but uh, it depends a bit on on you if you are familiar with react so is uh, similar so there are tags uh, similar to the one that you will find in um, um, html5 but is slightly different okay so for instance here so here we are looking at this header can you see i'm inside the home page here so this is the home page so sorry maybe i click without explaining so we have source pages index Okay, so this is the index file that we want to modify if we want to modify this uh, landing page. Okay, so we can scroll through the file. We have some imports, which are by default. We have some feature, which are basically these three features here, which we're going to change in a second. We have a function that is going to render our feature. Okay, so let's just uh, have a quick look. So each feature, can you see it has an heading three? So this one, and it has a paragraph, okay? So if we want to change that, we could uh, add another paragraph. So let's add another paragraph. I mean, of course, you, you will not probably want to do that, but I just want to show you. And this, this is my text, okay? So if you want to, now we have, this is my text inside here, and I've written to all of them. Of course, because what I'm doing here, I'm looping through these features that are written here at the top, and uh, I'm actually then uh, um, creating this feature three times here in the code, okay? So probably a better way would have been to go back here into these features. So this feature contain like a title, easy to use. So we're going to say my website. So in this case is going to change just the first one, my website here. And then we have the description. We have an image, okay? So each one has a title, image, and description, okay? If you want to have uh, another uh, text, so like you're going to say second uh, paragraph, you want to say second paragraph, okay? So you can add uh, another text and you can say, so we just copy exactly what we did here. So in the description, so we're going to write uh, first. So we're going to, we need to do it in all of the features. So feature one is this one. So we collapse it. Then we have feature two, we write second. And then we go in feature number three. So second feature, third feature. And then we do a control V and then we type Third, we save it, we save the file, 
now we have added the second paragraph of course nothing is appearing because you haven't added here in the feature component here so underneath here we need another p tag okay but inside here we pass the second paragraph so we just copy this and we need to import it here inside the feature so this is what we are going to do and now we have first second and third okay so it's very nice if you want to add another paragraph you can add that and if you want to modify the text you can modify the text as i said instead of extended you can say very nice i don't know and you save it very nice so it's very very nice very simple to just change it and to be honest this is the most complex part because it's the only file which is built with React. A part of this landing page, all the other pages are actually written in Markdown, so it's much easier to, to change them. So here we have the features, then we have the home, which will contain this layout, and this layout has uh, the name of my site, the tagline, which we are not going to change it here. We are going to change it from the configuration. So as you can see here, we have site title, site tagline we're going to change it from the configuration and uh, we can actually say where this link is sending us so when we click get started we go to the documents so we go back to the docs but uh, if you want to you could even change it to the blog uh, yes to the blog section so if we go back here and we click again now we are redirected to the blog so basically you can select uh, where uh, this link uh, is heading to. So this, as you can see, is a link tag and is wrapping the button. So basically, uh, the get started button. So you can redirect it to the documentation or uh, to the um, blog section, or eventually you could even add a link uh, to send an email or contact me if you want to say, like, uh, if you want to add a contact us, uh, contact us and then eventually inside here instead of using two base url maybe you will want to add an a tag with ih reference to send an email okay and finally here in the main body of the page which in this case is this part here at the bottom you have so you loop through the features okay so the feature that we actually wrote before so the different features and we are going to uh, loop through and we are going to add the features, the feature. So the feature is that uh, React component uh, that we actually modified just up here and we added another P tag, okay? So I hope this is not overly complicated. This, to be honest, is the most complex page to honestly change in uh, this GitHub, uh, in this Docusaurus. So I wanted to cover it because I think it's very important, uh, but you will see that the other Markdown pages uh, are much simpler. If you want to, you can even hide uh, straight away this page. So you don't even have to add it. You can have that your landing page is the person directly uh, redirected to the documentation. And for instance, uh, if you look at this website that uh, I have, um, I mean, I'm one of the developer. When you click on the help here at the top, so as you can see, there is no landing page. So Inside here, we have the um, we have straight away the documentation. So as you can see, there is no landing page. We remove the landing page altogether. So you have the documentation. We also remove the docs, and you have docs and uh, help. Okay. So of course, you can add the, instead of the docs, you can add another section which is help, or you can add as many sections as you want. Okay. So that was just to let you know and uh, now we can go to static and uh, inside static we have the images okay so the images are the images that actually are appearing on our website so this is the image that is actually appearing here so when we go into my site here i think a very nice website is this one on drone okay and you can find the name uh, sorry i misspell it on draw okay so you can find illustration for free and you can actually even change the color to match your uh, main color. So if you go back to the index.js page and uh, you can see here 
that we are importing uh, like the, um, the image. So as you can see here, I'm importing image and Rodocosaurus. So this image was actually downloaded from this website here. The very nice thing is that if you go back to the custom CSS and you copy the primary color, so you copy this primary color and you click here, you can paste this primary color here. So now this primary color will match exactly the color of your website. So let's say that I want to, doesn't matter. We just get this image here. So we download the SVG in our project, okay? So now we have in downloads, we have this folder here. So we are going to get this file here, control copy, and we are going to paste it into my website. So as I said in uh, uh, static images, and we're going to paste it inside here, okay? So the only thing that we need to do, so let's just call it uh, a figure one. Just I just call it figure because it's easier just to reference. So undo figure. So if you go back to, we, we need to add to Git. So with the IDE, for instance, we just have to add it here to, to Git. So we don't want to add this file, but we want to add this undo figure. So we're going to do add. So now the file is green because it's added to our uh, repository. So if uh, now we want to change that image, so let's go back to the index. You remember that we had the feature here. So we want to change the first image. So we look for undraw. Okay, so just let me copy this, uh, uh, this file name. So we are inside images. Okay, so we are images here. And then we have undraw figure dot svg we save our file we go back here our image has changed okay so you can download of course you can download images from wherever you want i think this website is very nice because it has a lot of images and they are free you can use them in your website and i think it's a very nice um, uh, place where you can download otherwise uh, you can also look for unsplash but unsplash uh, you don't get um, you get very beautiful Im images. So if you want to use an image instead, instead of uh, um, an icon, or uh, you can use uh, and you can use this website to get uh, very nice images. So we have covered this one. Uh, you can change this image. You can actually change also the uh, the icon here. So this five icon is the icon that is going to appear here at the top. Of course, you will want to replace this. Uh, with your own image. So uh, generate uh, um, ice uh, fav icon from SVG. So if you want to, I mean, you can do that easily with uh, Inkscape or something else. But if you want to, if you have a PNG image and you want to convert it to an icon, we can actually simply do it with this one. So I just want to show you how you can simply do it. So 5icon.io, I guess is called this website. So you can say the website is called, uh, I don't know, uh, we call it example uh, uh, Docosaurus YouTube. So EDY, we select the same color as we picked before. So the primary color here. So we change that. <clears throat> so the background is a circle and font size uh, a little bit smaller because I think, yes, perfect. So we download this icon. So now that we have this icon downloaded and we add uh, this uh, fav icon to our uh, repository. So we go inside here, fav icon, and we just replace, uh, sorry for that. We just replace this with this one replace this file in the destination yes so i would have expected this would have changed yes so this has changed it's just uh, slow so let me see if we see now now a new icon perfect so as you can see here the five icon here at the top it has now changed so we have uh, our new icon here at the top so it has changed from that docosaurus into our icon of the website 
Of course, you can also change that logo. So this is the logo, which is in SVG. So let me uh, go to the uh, file that we have actually downloaded. So we don't have it in SVG. We have just in PNG file, but let's get uh, this, uh, this one here. So it's going to be yeah, big enough. So we are going to add this file to, the, um, to our images. So let's get uh, this file, drag it up here. So we call it uh, we call it logo. It doesn't have to be in SPG. I mean, of course, if it's in SPG is better because SPG doesn't lose uh, any resolution. Uh, but uh, if you just have your logo in PNG, let me show you how to change it. So we are going to have to look uh, into the file. So always keep remember that you need to add this file to the GitHub repository. Otherwise, when you're going to deploy your website, you're going to get some errors and the, uh, basically the icon will not appear because you have not added to the GitHub repository. If you don't, are not using an IDE, just open a new terminal and you could do, when you did, like you remember before, we did git add and then a dot is going to add all the file to the Git repository. So, but if you're actually using yarn build, that's not a big deal because uh, you eventually are going to build the website locally and then you're dragging into Net Netlify. So don't worry about that too much, sorry. So if you look for logo, so we can see that our logo is uh, SVG. So our logo is uh, used here in the index. So, Ah, okay, so here is where our logo is actually imported and we haven't covered this file. So let me go in one second to cover this file. So index is done. We have seen how to change the images, how to change the text, how to add a new feature. Again, last thing that I want to show you, if you want to add a new section, I mean, probably you will not want to do this because it's repeated. Just copy the same file, the same like code that is here and then you can save it. And then now you have the same section twice, which probably, of course, you will want to change it. You can want to have features uh, maybe one and features two. But as you can see now, we have double and we could add more information, okay? I just wanted to show you that uh, if you are not familiar with React component, how uh, you can just simply just copy and paste, okay? And you can find more on that topic probably on other video videos. The other two files that we need to learn about and they are very important are this Docosaurus config and this sidebar. Okay, so let's go first to Docosaurus config file, which is important. And then finally, we go to the sidebar and then we're going to deploy our website again. And then I think with the video, we are practically done. So you will want to change a couple of things here. So you remember before that I told you we are not going to change the title of my site uh, from the index.js because it was inside here, so inside the home. You remember there was site config, so we are actually entering this file that we are looking at it right now, so site config. And uh, we are going to go into title, okay? And the reason why we didn't change it here, which you could have changed, like I just want to show you in a second, if I type hello, this is going to change uh, my title, but we don't want to do that. We just want to specify the, the name of the website just one time. So let's go back to what was the default value. I'm going to navigate back to this docosaurus config file here. So you can find it here. So if you want to have a look here, so you can change the title here. So we, we call our website, we say that it's called uh, ed why doesn't matter and we say the tagline is uh, um, documentation website Adaptation website okay so we save this and now we have edy we have documentation website here so you will want to add uh, your uh, uh, URL of the website uh, if you are going to purchase one. If you don't purchase one, doesn't matter. We can go back here, so net Netlify. So right now we have uh, our uh, URL 
which was this one. So we just copy this one. It doesn't really matter, but it's much better for uh, CEO. So Google is going to be finding your website much easier. So we add the URL. The base URL, we just keep it like a forward slash. So it means like where is the first page? You will need to change this if you deploy on GitHub pages, but you can easily use Net Netlify. And uh, you have the five icon. And you remember the five icon that we just changed before it was inside images, five icon. The five icon is just the image here at the top, not to be confused with this logo here. Organization name, EDY is just the organization. Project name is uh, usually the repo name. So let's change that to, uh, I guess, was uh, DocuSautos, uh, Docu. So this is important uh, if you are going to um, GitHub, Docu, uh, so. Sorry for that. Uh, so we call it uh, Docusaurus example YouTube. Okay. Uh, so this is actually user your GitHub organization username. So it uh, this is this configuration is actually important only if you deploy to GitHub pages. Let's see. Uh, let's ignore this one for a second. Sorry. And then uh, let's see if I have a little bit of time at the end. But uh, uh, probably it's easier that the, to be honest at the beginning that you use this service, uh, because then there is a little bit confusion if you're going to buy um, a domain, because if you change the static URL, probably it's better that you use this service. I think it's probably easier for you to get started. And of course, you can uh, actually, I will leave you to read the documentation deployment uh, on GitHub pages. Uh, so it's very, very, well, uh, very well written. So deploying on GitHub pages, uh, organization name, uh, you need to write the GitHub username. So there is actually an example here. So the URL will have to be your uh, website URL. So it's going to be HTTPS. Uh, in my case, will be Federico Tartarini.github.io. The base URL, uh, keep in mind that will have to be the name of the repository. No base URL uh, forward slash project name is going to be like your uh, project name, the name of the GitHub repository, for example. OK, so this will be the project name will be the name of the repository. The organization name is uh, the, um, the GitHub user account. So mine will be Federico Tartarini. The, the URL is going to be this one. So you just have to change username with GitHub. So this URL here is going to be https federico tartarini.github.io and the base URL, you need to put this uh, uh, project name, okay? So, okay, yeah, exactly. So the project URL in this case will be something like this. However, if you do this, then it's not going to work on Netlify. So you will have to choose either to use GitHub Pages or Netlify, okay? I would recommend you probably to use Netlify, sorry. So we have the same configuration. So we have the nav bar. So let's look very quickly at what is the navigation bar. So here we have the navigation bar, which is the bar at the top. You can change it. So we call it EDY is our website. So now it has changed. So we have our logo, which uh, we defined before. And now we want to change it because we actually have added a logo in PNG. So as I said, if you want to use it in SPG is better because it's a lossless format. But since the logo is very small, doesn't really matter. So let me save that. And as you can see, our logo has changed. So we changed the uh, five icon, the logo up here. Then we have the items that we want to display in the navigation bar. That is an array. So we have the documents here, and then we have the blog, okay? So we have two elements, and uh, we have GitHub, actually three elements, sorry. We have one element, 
which I canceled the parenthesis, sorry. So we have one element which will redirect to documents, one element which will redirect to blog, one element which will redirect to GitHub. So of course you will have to change your uh, hreference uh, inside here. So I probably could have increased the font size uh, Uh, font uh, size uh, so appearance uh, here okay sorry for that mm, yeah is it big yes so let me change it actually to 16 no uh, it's not really changing much i think Sorry for that. It's just I wanted to increase the font size. Uh, okay. So probably in your scheme, sorry, it's going to be a little bit uh, small. But if you want to add docs, if you want to add the blog, as I previously mentioned, if you want to add a new one, you could say to help. You can have a new label, which is help. And position left is going to be on the left side. So now, of course, yes, can you see there is help? Of course, it's going to break because there is page not found because we haven't created an help page yet. And we're not going to create it in this video, but I just want to show you that if you want to add a page here or a new link, you can easily do it by adding one element to the array. You can add a link to your GitHub. Right now, of course, it's not linked to my GitHub, but it's linked to Docosaurus. Just change this link and or if you want to add it to your LinkedIn, whatever you want. You have the footer, so that's the other part that we can change with this uh, config. So we have the footer, so we have the style, which is dark, and we have all the links that are actually displayed in the footer. So we have documents, and we show, we have all the labels that we can change. So you can change it to documentation and save it. So here the first link is uh, sending to documentation. I mean, of course, it's wrong. I just want to show you an example. So we go back to style guide. Uh, or same thing, you can change the title. You can say documentation up here. So now it's going to look like this. Again, this is an array of elements. So if you want to change one and you don't want to have this community, for instance, you can just uh, delete the full element. And now that is gone. OK? So. I just want to show you. So now I just have collapsed it, but basically everything that is between these curly braces and this one, and even the comma. So you just cancel everything out. So let me save this one and show it again. So you can cancel this whole thing. Now it's gone. And now we save the file and the uh, part is, uh, is gone. OK, so you can have all the links. So community, more. Uh, uh, documentation and so forth at the bottom you can change the copyright so this message here copyright my project so we say that my project is called edy and uh, ink built with docosaurus you can say the name of your company and so forth and then we have the presets so we are not going to change that uh, at the moment and is more an advanced thing but uh, is uh, what is preset so the, the the classic theme that we used uh, uh, at the beginning we have the documents uh, what is the home page so at the moment when you click on docs uh, can you see you get redirected to document one but if we click and it change it to doc three we save it again when we're going to click on docs can you see we're going to change the page uh, which we are redirected and uh, we have blog show reading time through edit url so you can actually change that and you have the team okay final thing that i want to show you actually i want to show you the important thing is uh, how to add a new document uh, to your um, to your website and how to delete the one that are default so currently as you can see in the docs uh, there are uh, four documents OK, we want to add a new one. How can we do that? So inside here, inside the docs, OK, we're going to click new and then we do um, file. 
is going to be a markdown file, so we call it uh, introduction, okay? Intro.md has to be a markdown file. You could have done the same exact thing by just going into this repository, into the folder here, into static, my website, so my website docs, you could have either copy and paste this file here, or you could have created a new, like a new file here with the extension that was marked down. So I've created this intro here. So the only important thing that you will need to add is these tags here at the top, okay? So let's just copy from the document number one, then we're going to change it. So the ID is going to be the ID that this defy, uh, def define our file. So to be consistent, we use the ID the same as the file name. That's very important. This is actually very important. The title of the page, we are going to call it introduction. Introduction. This is what is going to appear to our user. Okay. Same as was document number three. Can you see this is the document number three? So we want to add here in the title, we want to add what is going to appear to the user. And finally, the last thing, we want to add a sidebar label. So we want to add it, same intro, let's call it intro, uh, intro doc. I mean, of course, it's misspelled. I just want to show you the what is going to look like, okay? I want to show you what is the difference between intro, introduction, and intro doc, okay? Uh, all action uh, to um, let, let's call it intro that doesn't matter okay so here we are going to look at document number one which helps us a bit with the markdown syntax so we're going to add headers we are going to add uh, a bit of emphasis so you can actually copy and paste here so let's say that you like uh, this horizontal line you can add a bit of emphasis you can add a list you can add links and so forth. You can add images, so just copy and paste. So basically we are going to add a header number two, which we, which we like. So we add here, so welcome. And then we are going to add, uh, this is uh, our official documentation. And then we add uh, the sit, and then we add an horizontal line. And then we add another h2 tag. Actually, let's add an h2 tag. So let's say install. And here you explain how to install. So you can see follow these steps. And then we can add a list. So we can add one, uh, download our code. And then we can add actually without the one. And then two, we can say um, save it on your laptop. And then we can add, let's say, let's add an image uh, as you can see here from document number one. So we can add a link. Actually, let's add a link. And you can say here. You can say for more for more info, and then you can put a redirect URL. Okay, I will let you play with that. So now that we have created our file and we are happy with with it, so if you want to, I can show you how the file is going to look like here on this uh, ID because it kind of shows you how the file is going to look like. So now that we are, uh, um, now that we have added our file, how can we add it to our document, uh, to our website? Because as you can see here, now you go in, in the, the docs uh, and there is nothing new. Actually, our file is not here. So we need to look at the last file that I haven't covered. So it's the sidebar here and here in Docusaurus. So it depends where you want to add it. So we want to add it, let's say, under this docosaurus, but here at the beginning. So you remember that key that we defined at the beginning, so intro, okay? So that was the name of 
our ID intro here. So we go back to the sidebar and we have added this intro here. And now this file will appear up here. It's not actually going to appear. Actually, no. Yeah, it's actually appearing already. So if it's not appearing, it could happen that it's not appearing. You will have to stop the auto reload here. You remember here on the terminal that we started the server. So let's do that. So we press Ctrl C, terminate, and we do again yarn start. So this is going to run again our deployment server and uh, is going to load it here on your computer on our computer. Yes, yeah, so this is our website, documents, introduction. Okay, so if this doesn't happen automatically, like as it did for me, you just have to change uh, this, uh, you have to reload the, the deployment server. In our case, actually work out straight of the box, so it's even better. So if you want to remove now document one and document three, because they are not really any longer needed, because this is just an example, you just cancel those elements from the array, okay? Of course, your website is not going to call Docosaurus, so we can change that. And we can say EDY website. If it's two word, you need to be uh, in uh, caption, okay? So now we have EDY website, or you could have call it uh, like getting started, whatever you want. I mean, uh, you are free to just modify that. And if you click, can you see we have the link? It's going to redirect us to Google. Of course, that's not the case. I mean, you will want to add another link. But as you can see, it's very nice because we have this welcome and install. So just to recap, these tags here are just needed for Docusaurus to understand your, uh, your file. So it will not be actually displayed here on the page. So now let's change this one to intro. Introduction. So as you can see, it was introduct. Now we change it to introduction. Now it's fine. I just want to show you the difference. So this is the label that appears in the sidebar. This is the title, and this is the ID that we need to pass inside the sidebar file here. Okay. So that's the same. I want to show you very quickly how to add a blog, and that uh, I think uh, is all for this video. So we can just uh, duplicate this file. And uh, let's just me find, uh, so let's add the inside blog, uh, click here, new file, uh, we call it, uh, usually they use this format that they use the date. So let's use the same thing, 2020-08-23 dash uh, first uh, blog. Okay, so the type has to be a uh, markdown. So mark, uh, mark now. So I'm just uh, asking me which type of file uh, I'm going to add. So no, I don't want to exit. So we are going to copy the Ola here. So in this case, you just have to add a little bit more information. So ID, you just type uh, first blog. Uh, we call it uh, ciao. Author, uh, you just call it uh, FT, your name, author title, uh, you just have to change, of course, uh, all this information, the image URL, uh, blah, blah, blah. You can change the tags, uh, so we want to call it uh, blog, and here we are going to just type some uh, random text, doesn't really matter. So inside here, then we're going to add it uh, to the to the blog uh, to the blog section so in order to add it to the blog section we actually i guess is the it. yeah we don't even have to uh, do anything it should be reloaded uh, automatically but this as you can see there is no blog here the new blog is not uh, has not yet appeared so let me actually stop the server here yarn start again blog uh, no so how to add a new blog so just one sec actually sorry for that <clears throat> i just realized that the only reason why the blog was not appearing is because the markdown file that i added before was not uh, 
I mean, I, sp I explain how to, to the IDE how to open the file, but I did not save a markdown file. So let me just show you. So I just copied this file that we just created in uh, a few seconds ago. So we delete this file. But now it's okay, but we delete this file. So we delete the file. We create a new file, which actually has to be called specifically date followed by like some text. So 2020-08-23-first uh, blog doesn't matter the name itself but uh, so we add it to git we copy and paste what we just actually wrote here so the id title author blah 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 as you can see the file is not here we reload the page and uh, now okay so i'm having the same issue as before so really sorry so blog new file so we call it 2020-0823 and then we type first dot md okay so now everything is fine so we paste the text we save the file and now the blog is here so you can click on the blog and you can change the blog okay now it's done we go back to the terminal we open a new terminal yarn and we do yarn build so yarn build so now it's going to build the um, file and we're going to deploy to the um, docusaurus example on netlify so let okay is giving me an error because i open like here we are not cd into the my website so cd my website because here we are in the root directory we need to go cd into the website cd my website yarn build okay sorry for all these messages they are a bit in the way another way that you can do yarn build here is from package json as you can see here you can have uh, docusaurus build so you could have click here in this id doesn't matter let's just use the uh, terminal so it's done success so what do we need to do is we go back to the here to our uh, computer so we are inside here we go my website build okay so we just have to drag drag, drag and drop this website so we are going to go back here we are going to uh, deploy a new deploys so here at the top inside so we are inside my user docusaurus example deploys and then no need to update your site drag and drop so build you just drop it here it's going to upload the file publish is super fast and super and very nice so you click here no now we go in blog we have my new blog here we have the new document uh, which we are starting from document number three as we changed before uh, but uh, if we open the page uh, like here we have uh, edy so we have the contact us uh, we have the well, my website uh, so basically we have all the things that we've just added uh, and uh, is uh, um, the, the website is um, full and operational Thank you very much for listening. If you have any question, please uh, just uh, comment down in the section below. Give it a like to the video if you liked it uh, or uh, uh, subscribe to my channel if you want more video like this one. Thank you very much.